Welcome to this latest edition of Health Matters, which focuses on the NHS Health Check, which is a world-leading cardiovascular disease prevention programme in England. My name is Jamie Wartrell and I work as Associate Deputy Chief Nurse and National Lead for Cardiovascular Disease Prevention at Public Health England. The NHS Health Check programme provides a significant opportunity to reduce premature death, disability and health inequalities. Local authorities in England have done a tremendous job in inviting over 12 million eligible people to have an NHS health check and more importantly getting more than 6 million of them to take up the offer. However, there is still much variation in the delivery, particularly in the management of people with high cardiovascular risk, high blood pressure or high cholesterol. So how can we ensure that this programme achieves its full potential across the population? With me here today to discuss these issues are Dr Matt Kearney, National Clinical Director for Cardiovascular Disease Prevention at NHS England, Councillor Jonathan McShane, Chair of the London Borough of Hackney Health and Wellbeing Board, and Stephen Pennell, Health Improvement Principal at Oxfordshire County Council. So Matt, I'll start with you if I may. So as National Clinical Director for Cardiovascular Disease Prevention, what's the opportunity in tackling cardiovascular disease and certainly the, the earlier um, prevention and detection of the disease? Well, I think the opportunity is huge, really. And there's robust evidence that prevention works um, to prevent um, heart, cardiovascular um, disease. So if we take lifestyle risk factors, behavioural risk factors like obesity and smoking, we know that they substantially increase your risk of having a heart attack or stroke or dementia, but also that preventive interventions do help people to quit smoking and to reduce weight. And similarly, with clinical risk factors like high blood pressure or cholesterol or, or blood sugar, again, we know that drives up your risk of having um, heart attack or, or stroke, etc., but also that treating those conditions substantially reduces that, that in increased risk. But what we also know about all of these risk factors is that late detection is common, and so millions of people are walking around uh, with undetected risk factors are quite unaware that they're running this higher risk of heart attack, stroke, dementia, etc. So I think the, the NHS Health Check offers perhaps three crucial benefits um, to help address that. And first of all, it provides a systematic way across a population of identifying the leading, what we know are the leading risk factors for cardiovascular disease and other conditions. But at an individual level, it helps individual people to understand their risk profile and to be helped to think about what they might do to mod modify that risk. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, it offers an opportunity to, de to detect risk early. So by starting at the age of 40, there's the opportunity to actually minimise the length of time that people are exposed to risk. Um, and so that has to be a significant benefit, I would say. Okay. Jonathan, you're the um, Cabinet Member for Health, Social Care and Devolution at the London Borough of Hackney. What does the NHS Health Check programme mean to you? So I guess at a fundamental level, um, all councils want their residents to lead healthy, happy lives. And, and the NHS Health Check is a really important part of helping us to do that. So it allows us to ensure that residents um, understand the risks they face, um, understand what they can do with the support of the council and other partners to modify some of those risks. And Hackney, like many boroughs, faces you know, often quite stark health inequalities and a properly targeted health checks programme can be a key part of um, tackling that too. Stephen, you're a public health principal and commissioner of the NHS health check programme at Oxfordshire County Council. What do you think we need to be doing to both encourage um, the service users and the providers of the health check to increase both coverage and the, 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 the quality of the programme? So I, th I think a really good place to start is to, particularly with the a new financial year upon us, is to do a, a form of audit or review of your current system. So, uh, and Public Health England have developed uh, the STARS framework, which is built very similarly on the clear assessment for tobacco control. And what, what that does is it gives uh, us as commissioners an opportunity to kind of reflect on uh, some of the, the gaps in the current system, but also celebrate some of the successes when it comes to engaging with the public. And so one area, for example, that I think this, this will ask you some really good questions is about is, so do we uh, involve our residents, our population in developing our, our system, our model locally? And do we use that um, to inform our commissioning? 
And in, ter in terms of examples then and how you can go about that, there's some fantastic stuff available to us as commissioners, such as the National CVD Prevention Conference that's running on the 8th of February. Uh, we have a forum on the NHS Health Share website. Uh, we have local networks where we can engage and talk to other local authorities. Um, so there's some fantastic opportunities, I think, for us to learn from best practice. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, and we can build that into our systems. Okay. Jonathan, um, you talked about this um, programme being a new responsibility for local government. How do we get elected members more involved in the NHS Health Check? So I think elected members have, have two roles in relation to Health Check. So the first is that good councillors certainly are community leaders, and they have links to and an understanding of communities and community groups that the NHS and uh, the wider public sector often doesn't have. So how do we use that in terms of targeting um, the health check at, at risk groups, mm. you know, making sure that there's greater take up. And the second really important part is councillors have a responsibility to hold commissioners and providers to account. So um, for example in Hackney we used to have um, 42 separate contracts with individual GP practices and councillors and others challenged that and said is there a better way of doing it and we now have one contract with a GP confederation, there's a programme manager who works with all of those practices, um, she does training, she monitors performance, she develops improvement plans if a practice is struggling and in the first year of that new way of working we almost doubled the number of health checks that were taken up and 41 out of the 42 practices met their targets and those targets aren't just about numbers, there are also incentives around um, targeting groups that are particularly high risk so two really important roles for councillors there. Matt, when the Health Techs programme was introduced, there was some kind of concern around the number of referrals it might create for lifestyle services or clinical interventions. How do you think we're kind of overcoming that, that challenge? Yeah, that's a really important question. Um, because when an individual's had a health check, um, many, many, many people will need um, further support, for example, a referral for, to help with smoking cessation or weight management, physical activity, um, etc. And equally, there'll be fairly large numbers of people who are found to have abnormal blood pressure or blood sugar or high cholesterol who again need clinical follow-up. I think what's important is that not all of that has to be done in the GP practice. And um, I think there's a real opportunity here for uh, local authorities working, collaborating with CCGs, with practices um, and, and other providers to look at what's the best way we can be joined up here, efficiently provide these follow-on on services, looking at different settings, looking at different professionals to deliver that. And how do you see that fitting with the introduction of s sustainability and transformation partnerships and accountable care systems? Yes, yeah, so I think STPs, accountable care systems or organisations, they all provide I think a really new and exciting opportunity for much more strategic working together. So it's a real opportunity for NHS organisations to work much more closely with local authorities, for example, and, and other partners to look at how can we manage our overall resources better? How can we deliver NHS standards? How can we improve the health of our um, populations? And um, I guess probably for most STPs or accountable care systems, if not all, cardiovascular disease prevention is going to be a priority because let's face it, it's responsible for a quarter of all um, premature deaths, it's responsible for an enormous amount of disability that that community has to deal with and support and, and pay for. It's one of the biggest drivers of health inequality. In fact, heart attacks, strokes, vascular dementia contribute, are they the largest contributor to the, the gap in life expectancy between rich and poor? Something like 27% of that gap is due to cardiovascular disease. So this is a priority. It's going to be a priority for every um, one of these org organisations. And I guess what the NHS Health Check um, uh, brings is an opportunity to do things systematically for your whole population. Let's go out and systematically identify what we know are the leading um, risk factors and to make a difference to the health of our population. But also, I think, specifically to help us to address health inequalities and, imp and, and help to reduce health inequalities by focusing those efforts across an STP or an accountable care system on those communities who are most at risk and have most to gain from this intervention. So Stephen, we know from national evaluation and research on the NHS Health Check programme that there's certainly room for improvement. How do we put that local lens on quality? So I think a really good place to start is in our commissioning process and embedding quality on the offset. Uh, Public Health England have last month relaunched their programme standards and I think they've set a really good benchmark for local authorities to use. Um, that plots a, a resident 
pathway through the health check program from their invitation to offer a risk assessment, communication of risk, risk management and their, and their clinical follow-up. And if we're monitoring our providers against those standards, then we will certainly reduce some of the variation. But we'll also identify um, areas of improvement that we could, we could influence locally. And then there's some fantastic examples going on across England which we could use from. We, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's stuff that we presented at the upcoming cardiovascular disease prevention conference. There's been some fantastic webinars that PHE have been hosting recently. Um, there's also your local network, so I'd really encourage the commissioners to get involved in your local network because you can really learn from others. I'm afraid we've now come to the end of our time, but I would like to thank our expert panel members for joining me today. Recent research has shown that the NHS Health Check programme is reaching high risk and vulnerable groups, and this is down to the hard work of our local teams who are responsible for commissioning and providing this programme. We also know that the programme is leading to more people being identified earlier with both behavioural and physiological risk factors, which if managed earlier, could significantly prevent or delay the onset of many thousands of conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, stroke or certain types of dementia. We have heard how over 6 million people have benefited from the NHS Health Check programme and discussed how coverage and uptake may be increased, especially through increasing collaboration between the NHS and local authorities. Please do take time to explore this edition of Health Matters, which includes links to a variety of practical tools, infographics, case studies and blogs. Thanks for watching.